Hello everybody. Uh, so we're still talking about the uh, Aspen Plus and today we're gonna start with uh, exploring the software and um, getting to understand how to get started. So um, after you install the software, I'm, I, I work with version 9, it's the version that, that I have. Um, there are gonna be um, a lot of uh, similarities between different versions, between version 8, 9, 10. I think the last version now is 11. Um, but the there will be some some uh, differences, but they're not gonna be too much. Anyway, so once you open the software, this is what you're gonna see, um, and um, you'd see that there are two ribbons here. There is the view ribbon and the resources ribbon. Uh, it's it's kind of similar to the office um, ribbon uh, kind of uh, way of, of showing the icons and stuff like that. So um, you have here some options in the file uh, ribbon. There are um, stuff like uh, the, the drive if you have uh, uh, um, an, I mean a, an account and then you can, you can access your account and you can open existing files uh, if you already have files that you want to open and then you'll have this, this window opening up um, and there is new uh, file um, and this is what we're going to start with today um, and in this new file the, the first thing that we'll see is this um, window and this window gives you some options actually and these options are uh, related to the um, the templates the templates are kind of uh, some um, um, it's, it's a template that has uh, some settings uh, that you're not gonna repeat so you did it once and you're gonna use it many times so you put it as a template and you can use it there are templates that are uh, built in um, like what you saw you see here there is air separation there is chemical processes, electrolytes, gas processing, metallurgy, pharmaceuticals, polymers, whatever. Um, and the difference between these is uh, mainly, there are many differences, but mainly in, is in the, um, the uh, thermodynamic models and in the metric unit or the, the, uh, the unit systems that you are using in your file. Um, I'm, I'm not going to use any of these now. I'm going to go for blank template. Um, and here you would see that it gives you a blank simulation and some recently used templates. If you have used any one recently, it's going to show up here. Um, I'm going to start with the blank simulation that has no settings at all. You're going to start from scratch. And this is, um, this is important to know um, how to um, do your settings. Um, and in case you used any one of the other templates and you need to change one of the settings, you can know where to go. Um, when you start, you'd see that there is there are some more ribbons here, uh, like the home ribbon wasn't there before. There is the resources ribbon that was not there before, uh, or it was there, but I mean the customize was not there. Um, and you'd see that there are uh, like some uh, some parts of the uh, of the window is the properties, uh, which is give gives you some sort of uh, tree uh, kind of uh, navigation thing. Uh, and it gives you uh, uh, hints on what information is missing, as we'll see in a few minutes. Um, and there is this, uh, this is where you do everything. This is, uh, you, for instance, choose specifications. The specifications so will show up here. If you go for methods, the methods will show up here. So whatever you, you pick will, will show up here in, in, the, in this, uh, this part. There is one more thing that's not, uh, it wouldn't be uh, view, you cannot view, see it now uh, because it's behind my head now. So uh, um, I think, yeah, it's clear now. So uh, here you can see there is properties, simulation, safety analysis, and energy analysis. And these are the four environments that you can switch between uh, while working with Aspen Plus. Um, there are um, um, uh, Mainly the properties is the the base of everything. This is where you uh, use uh, or or you pick the uh, uh, components. This is where you choose the thermodynamic package. This is where you can do some analysis to the components that you have. Uh, and and there are other more things we will will go through this um, as 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 we go. Uh, in the simulation environment, this is where you do your simulation. You put your, your um, blocks and you connect them and you put your inputs and you run the simulation, see the results. This is where you do everything. Um, the safety analysis and energy analysis discuss other topics that are related to safety and energy as it's clear from their names, but this is not 
uh, like th something we'll discuss now. Uh, so the main main two environments are the properties and the simulation environments. Um, and here you'd see that there is uh, there are some um, some folders here, and each folder can be uh, expanded. Uh, I'll, I'll I'm not go through all of them because it's, it's gonna take a lot of time. But in this video, I'm gonna go through um, the first the setup. And this setup is uh, kind of giving you some uh, uh, general uh, setup for the file and for uh, the the um, the simulation. It's, it's, it's mainly for for the properties, not for the simulation. You'd see here there is the specifications. Uh, it, it it asks you what is the uh, unit set, and this is what you'd see here. It gives you meter Celsius bar, and this is meter Celsius bar. So the same thing. If I use uh, metric, is gonna go for meter here. So it's it's the same thing that you see here. And and for this um, uh, unit uh, unit sets, uh, there are other unit sets. It's not just one thing. It it uh, in this in this case, you'd uh, pick what kind of units that you're gonna use. For instance, I wanna use um, uh, Celsius for temperature, atmosphere for pressure, and uh, kilo mole for the um, um, number of moles, whatever. So um, in in this case, uh, you wouldn't uh, uh, change the the units every time. This is the units that are gonna show up. Um, in defining new streams or whatever, um, and you 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 can use any one of these, and you can uh, define your own set, and this is something that we will see um, in in a few minutes. Um, you will find there are some some more uh, information here that are related to um, kind of the the project ID, the project name. They're not very important actually, so for me, but I I don't think they they are important. Um, in general for the simulation. You see here some um, uh, information related to the simulation uh, options or the calculation options. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna play with this now. Maybe we can uh, we can visit them later. Um, the the thing here is the unit sets. You see there are these four unit sets there. There are the built-in sets. Um, for instance, if I if I open this, you'd see that these are not active, so you cannot change the name, you cannot change the the information here, um, or the units that you you're gonna work with. But you can see it's it's um, split into standard units, the heat units, enthalpy, heat related, um, the flux and heat transfer coefficient, the entropy, the heat capacity, the transport, the uh, volume, volumetric flow rate, density, um, diffusion, mass transfer coefficient, surface tension. Um, and the concentrations as well, you'd see size, currency, and, and other units. So um, th this is something you cannot change, but you can add one more uh, set. I will call it US1, um, and here it tells you, you you can pick one of the uh, already existing unit sets and change uh, what you have in here. So I'm, I'm gonna get for what I have from meter Celsius bar and you'd see the units maybe I have the volumetric flow rate I want it to be meter cube per second so it's gonna be cubic meter per uh, second here okay um, and the the temperature I can make it Kelvin so it's a new unit set with uh, some different combinations of units. It's important because it saves a lot of time actually. Because in if, if you you have the unit uh, in another or the, or the the unit that set uh, setup is different from what you're uh, interested in, then each time you you uh, put an input with these units. For instance, the temperature. If in any case you put the temperature in, in Kelvin, you need to change the unit first and then put the number. You need to change and you, you'll do it. You'll do it a lot of times. So it's gonna be more convenient to do this. <clears throat> um, and and this is what we have here. So I'm 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 gonna I'm still working with meter Celsius bar, um, and this is uh, what we need to know about the setup. The second part is the components, and you see that there are some uh, folders with a blue uh, circle with a right tick. And there are some others that have a circle with uh, half filled with a red color, and this gives you a hint that there are some missing information here. And if you see um, here, um, it tells you required input incomplete, uh, which means that you you cannot uh, skip this and go to the next because the the input that you require here uh, must be fulfilled first. 
um, and to do this you need to simply go to the place where the red color is and here you'll see that it gives you the specifications there are some other information and and um, and this is what you'd see uh, here uh, I, I I don't have any components here and this is something that's important to understand um, Sman plus has a very very big um, database that uh, has a lot of materials it's a huge number of materials um, and for each material it has all the required information about the physical chemical properties and and all the molecular formula and everything about the material so um, if you go to the simulation environment and you ask Aspen plus to um, add a component uh, for instance um, styrene monomer to the uh, the stream uh, it's, it's not gonna search for styrene in the database it's gonna search uh, for styrene in the components that you picked here so you have to tell the Aspen plus which components that you're gonna work with and um, these are the components that you're gonna pick from when you go to the simulation environment so here um, um, if, even if the component appears only in one stream it doesn't matter but it it doesn't look any way uh, other than uh, or anywhere other than here so for instance I'm gonna look for methane I'm gonna type methane here in the component ID and uh, press enter and it it understood what I say and I knew that because it it typed ch4 here um, I can put ethane um, and it works but in case I have um, another another material like um, um, I would say uh, one three butadiene you'd find that it's not gonna let you type any more letters um, it is bounded by the number of characters, which is four is eight characters. So once the eight characters are done, you cannot type any more. Um, and of course, it, this is this is not the name. So if if you press enter, uh, Aspen Plus wouldn't understand what type of material that you're gonna uh, or or you, you want to to add to the component list. And and you'd see here it uh, it got angry and it kind of froze. Um, I'm I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. So now it's it's done. But you see, it didn't put any chemical formula for this. Um, and to to make sure that um, the Aspen Plus uh, got what you you want or not, there is um, a button here that's called Review. If you click on the Review button, it should give you some information about the materials that you have in this list. Uh, material the information are related to the physical or and chemical properties so you see here there is something like API which is more like a, a petroleum uh, components thing uh, the, the the DG information which is the uh, the uh, Gibbs free energy formation the enthalpy of I don't know what is this so I, if if you if you um, have something like this it's it's and this is uh, kind of very common thing you have um, a parameter like this and you don't understand what is this parameter you can just um, um, put the mouse on it and then it's gonna give you a hint or uh, some brief description so it tells you it's an aqueous phase heat of formation at infinite dilution anyways it, it's it's not uh, it's not something of interest you'd see that this is the boiling point this is the critical temperature this is the um, I don't know what's the VB so I'm gonna put here it's the molar volume at the boiling point it is the critical volume you'd see there are very very um, good information and you can add more for instance I'm looking for something else here um, I don't know what um, we should uh, think of but anything that is not uh, already there we can put the molecular weight uh, it's already been there so let's uh, find something else uh, the Omega it's already there anyway so uh, you can show or, or uh, remove any of them if, if you are interested but but the important point now is that I don't have the one three butadiene it doesn't understand what is this it doesn't get doesn't give you any information about it and this is because there is nothing called one three buta um, so it couldn't tell you what what exactly is this and to um, um, and to fix this uh, we need to find another way to enter the uh, component name 
what we did here is not is not very common. Um, it's it's usually okay for for um, elements or the comp compounds that have a small short name, uh, I mean short name, or that are um, or it's not or uh, has short name and is uh, not confusing. It, it it doesn't look like another name because you might try the name and you find something else. So what you're gonna do is, is uh, press on or click on the find button and here it, it uh, gives you some more advanced searching uh, methods. So it tells you if the material begins with a specific name, contains a specific name, or has specific name it equals this name. So I wanna say 1,3-butadiene for instance. Um, and I'm gonna call um, or press on define now and I'm gonna wait now for a few seconds to see where uh, where we're going if um, uh, Aspen can find it and that's already found it it's 1,3-butadiene and you can check the molecular formula if you're uh, interested um, now I wanna add this to this list so what I'm gonna do is press add selected um, compounds uh, and you see now it has it has the the uh, the component name and the uh, alias already there. Um, for for some cases you have what we call the data banks, and for some cases the the compound that you are interested in is not in this uh, data bank. So we have here a very big list of data banks, um, and we have here some of them are um, are the selected ones. This is where the uh, uh, the software is gonna search for the compounds in. It's not gonna uh, search for butadiene in all these data banks. It's just gonna uh, search for them here. Um, of course, you're not gonna uh, know which uh, data bank contains the components that you are interested in. Uh, the, the common components are, are are gonna be there in in all the data banks, but there might be some components that are there and are in, in some of them and not on the other. So it might require some search from you to um, to find if if you, if you have a specific material that you don't uh, find in the in the selected data banks, you might um, do a quick search uh, on the Aspen Plus Help or on the internet to find out. Which one of them is the one uh, that contains the uh, compound that you're interested in? Um, and now, if you if we press the review button, we should now find three columns, not only two, and the three columns contain information about the materials, not uh, as before. Um, so this problem now is solved, and you can add as many elements as you want. You can uh, or compounds as you want. You can reorder them, and this reordering is. Um, uh, just related to how they will appear uh, on the simulation when you uh, you add the concentrations or the compositions. So uh, what it, it, as it looks like here as it is, um, I will add I will find that the the composition uh, table contains methane, then ethane, then one three butadiene. Uh, let's say I have the data in 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 a, a piece of paper or in another file uh, with butadiene before methane and ethane so I move it to the top it's not going to make any change to the simulation or to the work but it's easier for me as a data entering um, or for data entering to uh, enter them with the same sequence that I have in in the source that I am getting the data from um, so this is just for um, making them in a specific order um, the one more thing that we find here is that uh, we understand the component name and this is the molecular uh, formula and this is the name that's gonna appear by the way if I have butadiene here I wanna call it another name I kinda uh, um, let's say I wanna call it uh, buta only uh, you can rename it uh, and in this case uh, it, it's, it still keeps all the information but just change the, the name as it appears to you if I if I make this CH4 it's okay you can rename it and it is uh, gonna appear like this uh, still it's methane the software understands that it's methane, methane but the name that appears to you is different uh, because it's it's easier for you you like this name whatever the the reason uh, the last column is kind of different from or, or not not fully understood uh, and this is the default that appeared to us that it is conventional what does it mean the word conventional and if you click on this you'd find solids non-conventional pseudochemicals assays blends hypothetical polymers and so on to under understand this i want to um, show you this uh, part of the textbook 
um, and it was the discussing the these categories and these types of, of um, uh, components. Um, so uh, this conventional is uh, uh, for the single species fluids. It's for vapors and for liquids. It does not work for solids. And by the word conventional, we mean that this component or this uh, compound or this element, whatever, it is part of the liquid vapor um, equilibrium. It contributes in the equilibrium and vapor liquid equilibrium. Uh, and uh, if uh, if you pick the, the the component, then all the information are there. But you you know, must know that this is going to be part of the vapor liquid equilibrium calculations. For the solid, it is a single species um, solids, uh, and and uh, we need to understand what do we mean by single species. The single species is the compound or the or, or the the the, the uh, material that is composed of pure uh, compound. It is pure water. It is pure uh, sodium carbonate. It is pure methanol. Whatever the the component is, it's gonna be a single species. You define the molecular molecular structure or the name, and it is totally pure sodium carbonate. For the non-conventional, these are for the uh, non-pure uh, chemical species uh, for the solids. Uh, you cannot define them as uh, a molecular uh, uh, component. Uh, you cannot tell that this is sodium chloride, uh, potassium carbonate. It is not something like this. It's something like a wood pulp, like coal. It, uh, coal, it is a, a, a comp a com a composed of different materials uh, like cellulose, water, and other uh, components. And this is uh, characterized by uh, component attributes, and it does not uh, participate in chemical or phase equilibrium. You, you, you need to define it another way, not just by defining the name. Uh, for the pseudochemicals or assays or blends, that is more like the petroleum fractions. The, uh, if, if you know the petroleum fraction, it comes as a, a combination of many, many, many materials or the many compounds, and each compound is separated in the fractionation. And this is what the, the petroleum fractionation does. It breaks it into the light uh, vapors, the methane, ethane, propane, and then into um, the, the uh, light uh, um, uh, liquids uh, like uh, gasoline and the jet oil and stuff like that, and, and all the way till you go to the waxes and the asphalt. Um, so this is a blend or assay or pseudo component, and it is defined by the uh, mainly the physical properties, boiling point, molecular weight, specific gravity, um, and like the API that we just uh, saw before. For the polymers, oligomers, and segments are for the polymer uh, related uh, uh, species. Uh, you have a monomer, and if the monomer is uh, um, get uh, like very slightly polymerized, you would get, uh, and, and the monomer is the segment, and the small chains of the polymer are called oligomers, and the large chains are, go, are called polymers. Uh, the last thing is hypothetical liquid, and by this we mean that it's uh, it's um, material that's already in or, or it's it should be in the solid phase, um, and it's part of uh, 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 an alloy with other material, and then it should behave as a liquid, and it's originally as a solid. So it's something hypothetical, um, and uh, y you need to define it in in, in a specific way. In, in general, the general uh, case that we work with, we, we either use conventional or solids, depending on what we work with. If you don't use solids, we use conventional. Um, we might go through the, the, uh, these, these types of, of, uh, uh, of components in, in the future um, if, if we, uh, we pass by something like this. Um, so now we have the components already defined, um, and here this is what uh, you see. You can see the molecular structure uh, of the components. Uh, you can define the uh, something related to the uh, the atoms and how they are connected. I think it's it's not a uh, uh, very uh, very common thing to work with. You can see here if you're defining an assay or a blend, if you have um, light end properties like uh, for for the uh, um, assays and blends you can need to work something like this uh, so the components component attributes and and all these are for defining and the polymers for defining the other the different uh, categories of the uh, elements that we work with 
Um, so this is for the components um, and uh, um, when we are done with the components then we would see and you see here there are some uh, stuff like for the blends the the essays for the non-conventional and you need to define them you here can do the same thing for the data banks that we did before so um, it, it it's this part is is related mainly to the uh, component selection uh, and defining the component properties uh, you can you can see there is something that's called user defined if you want to de define a new component uh, you can go through this again you need to have uh, you, you say that you need to have molecular weight more boiling point molecular structure uh, you need to have uh, a lot of information about the material that you want to define so you can define it um, um, properly um, once we're done with this, we should go to the next part. Uh, you'd see that the, the components is now blue, so it's it's fully defined. You need to go through the next part, which is defining the thermodynamic package. And this is what we're going to see in the next video, inshallah. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.